So my daughter and her boyfriend are finally moving in together. I'm so glad she's finally dating someone with a career. No more DJ and men who ride skateboards. Do you think they're going to get married? They better. It's not like she's getting any younger. I, I keep telling her, stop focusing on your career. Just have some kids. I will take care of them. Maybe she can freeze her eggs. I heard people do that now. You know, Why do you keep staring at that girl over there? What girl? Do you have a crush on her? No. You're so immature. No, it's terrible. Ah, thank you. Hey, Megia. How are your college application going? Fine. Oh, what is that one school you were talking about? Um, Sarah Lawrence. Ah, ah, yes. The lesbian art school? It's a liberal art school. I mean, it's basically the same thing. No, it's not. What about Wellesley? You know, that's where Hillary Clinton went, right? Yep. I think with your grades, you have a really good shot. Oh, and it's not far away from MIT and Harvard. Hey, maybe you can meet some nice boys over there. Hmm? <laughs> I'll think about it. How's your dinner going? So boring. Same. I feel like all my family ever wants to talk about are colleges and boyfriends. Do you think they actually care about that stuff? Or they just don't have anything else to talk about? Probably both. Well, I probably should get back to dinner. Wait, um, what's your name? Maggie. I'm Selene. Okay. Have you been upstairs yet? Chinese restaurants always have fish tanks. Hmm. Isn't it for like, good luck or something? Yeah, or maybe Chinese people just really like fish. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Wait, we're Chinese, right? Yeah. No way. Me too. Really? Yeah. Um, I'm Chinese and Japanese. Oh, cool. Do you speak Chinese? Uh, uh, no. No, my mom does, but she never taught me. Oh. What about you? Um, I speak Cantonese and Mandarin and some Japanese. Oh, damn. <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> Do you see this one fish? I think it's pregnant. This one too. Uh, I don't know, I think it might just be fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, maybe you're right. So, you're here with your family? Yeah. Are you guys close? Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Do you want to try? 
I just don't think they know me. What do you mean? Like they're always trying to get me to be some version that I don't want to be instead of actually trying to get to know me. Yeah, I get that. Really? Totally. I kind of feel like Asian parents are going to be disappointed in you no matter what. So at some point, you kind of just have to decide, am I going to be miserable and blame them for it? Am I just going to do what I want? Let them figure it out? You don't think that's selfish? It might be, but I'd rather be selfish than miserable. Yeah, I guess I would be too. What? Nothing, you're just really pretty. What? Sorry. Oh, I don't know why I said that. No, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> Do you really mean that? Mean what? Never mind. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I did.
see two bears. Moving around quick these days. Does that mean you ready to get back to work or what? Hop in, man. Got a seat for you right here. No good anymore. It's as fast as I move. Plus, I gotta tell my PO. You know how it is. What's a PO know about making a living out here? Come on, two bears. People been trying to raise up since you've been gone. I need you. Horace knows you can handle business. Let's show him you're worth it, Shit, I'm good. All right, then. I know you can call her eventually. Let's go, man. Hey, good morning. Oh, Dad, it's fine. I just want to say good morning is all. How's he doing? He's good, just hungry like always. Good. Um, I'm about to head out. Is there anything else you guys need? Blankets, water? Uh, yeah, diapers. Oh, okay. Um, what kind? No, they're, they're on the couch, in the bag. Oh, oh. Yeah. Just put them by the door. I'll grab them. Okay. Uh, are you sure you guys don't need anything else? Dad, you're gonna be late. Everything's fine, I told you. All right then, if you say so. Uh, no. Nothing right now. I'll pass. You wish to tell us your name? Casey, two bears. Powerless. Sometimes, I feel like, what the hell am I supposed to do these days? You know, my mind's all wrapped up about money, work, kids. So much shit to deal with. Nobody ever taught me nothing about any of it. I don't know. It's a lot, you know? Then, just when I think things are finally going all right, you know, I'm feeling good, my daughter's happy, somebody has to come along, try to mess it all up, tempting me. Trying to get me back to old ways. Been patient in these rooms, long time. Long time. I don't know how much longer I can wait. When am I gonna get my chance, huh? That's what I wanna know. Something don't happen soon. Who knows what I'm gonna do? I don't know. Anyways, that's it. Wisdom to know the difference. Thank you for those words, Casey. I've been where you are. When I was out drinking, and doing all that nonsense, I too burned up all my bridges and didn't even know it. But now I'm here and all I'm trying to do is show up every day and help others with their battles. 
This is what makes it work. It's our way, the native way. Mm -hmm. Just one day at a time. Look, I'm shut to me up without me. I'm shut to him. 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 Hold on, almost done. Yeah, I'll be quick. Come on, what did I just say? No, for real? Sorry, champ. I didn't see it was you. Hey, yo, you missed the spot. <laughs> Freaking jet. Drop every time. Dick is out, coach. Hey, coach. Coach McNally. Well, hurry and clean that up, would you? Actually, you need someone to fill in to spar. You want something, Tonto? Just saying. If you need someone to spar, I can do it. You? <laughs> Indians. <laughs> they either want a drink or a fight. No, we got other work we can do, so you just go on and keep cleaning. Well, isn't the champ fighting a southpaw next? Yeah, what's your point? Well, besides you, I'm the only southpaw around here. Same weight and everything. What do you think? I already got a punching bag, coach. Let's look at him. He's old as hell, man. You see, the problem is, you get hurt, I don't got a janitor no more. You're the best I ever had. Yeah. Who cleans up when you're bleeding on the floor? Let's make a bet. I clean yours, or you clean mine. <laughs> what, coach? Think I never fought before? Come on, you really want to get in here? Get punched around? For what? Someone pissing your Wheaties this morning or something? Just trying to help the champ get ready. Besides, getting punched is a lot easier when it's for cash. You pay me what you think I deserve. Well, how nice of you. Yeah, it's whatever, coach. Let's see what he's got. I barely got warmed up anyway. Easy work better than no work. Yeah, OK. You heard him. Go on, get gloved up. And pray you don't knock any more marbles loose in that head of yours. Watch that left hook. I know. Stay on him, champ. <clears throat> it hurts. Oh, not bad, Tonto. Not bad. <clears throat> Look at shot. Yeah. You see, he's gonna mess you up, Chief. I can get another self off. He's giving up on me already, coach. I'm good. Come on. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Is it? That's all you got? Hey, Chief. Two bears, Coach. Just so you know. Right. Well, uh, don't forget this, two bears. You earned it. You held your own in there. Thanks. I got everything cleaned up for you. Hey, uh, I got another fighter on Monday needs some work with a southpaw. Smaller guy. Could use some humbling. It's good to know, Coach. I ain't worried about Monday yet. I think you, you eat with your eyes first, so when I'm working on my cakes, 
Um, I, I want them to look as appetizing as humanly possible. Trying to bring things that I personally love, like Japanese food, Korean food. I lived in Japan for just a little bit and got to see a lot of how they create very detail-oriented, French-inspired food. And also trying to remember like my Southern heritage, my Jewish heritage, and trying to mush that all into like a big pie <laughs> is like my goal. <laughs> I lost my pastry job at Urban Standard when they closed at the beginning of the pandemic. And I made an Instagram. I was just like, let's see if people like this Japanese bread that I'm making in my apartment. And they did. And it got pretty serious pretty fast. And now <laughs> we're opening a bakery. So yeah, here we are. I grew up in Chelsea, Alabama. Uh, in a, in a space that at the time was not very developed, like Chelsea, Alabama is now, so there wasn't a lot to do. So we, we cooked. I spent, I was making shoe pastry when I was like 10, just bored in my kitchen being like, this will be great. <laughs> so it, it was like something that, that was a pastime for my family to just hang out in the kitchen and cook together. I went to Sanford for fine art. I was a painter, I tried painting, I tried sculpture work, I tried photography, and it just didn't hit. And then when I started baking, I couldn't stop. I was just like, if I could make this the way that I would make a painting, this would make it 10 times better. And I just started doing it. A lot of things that I'm looking for when it's uh, decorating a cake, when it comes to that, is just the aesthetics, the textures of the items. If the fruit looks bumpy and weird, how can I place this here? If that fungus branches off in this great way, what kind of shadow does it cast when you're slicing it? People are like, what's up with these combinations that you're using? And it, there have been so many times, this is gonna sound like a bit, and I'm gonna sound crazy on camera, or yeah, but I'll like wake up from a nap and be like, oh, white miso paste could go in that so well. It's just something in my brain is looking for like very basic components. And luckily we as humans have developed really intricate ingredients for me to have all of those flavors at once. And I try to find um, little pathways that connect to tasting the right thing. And sometimes that looks like putting mushrooms inside of a cake. And when that happens, I'm like, oh, it tastes perfect. That's exactly what I want. <laughs>
something I would have loved to tell myself is just like, don't care too much about perception. I think there were a lot of times during the beginning of this process where I kind of pitfalled into like, oh, I'm headed to this market. This is definitely what they would like to see. Or like, oh, I'm creating this content to try and brand myself in this certain way. This is what these folks are gonna wanna like try and see from me. But at the end of the day, your personality is gonna shine through. And if you're making something you really love, there's no way that you're gonna be able to conceal that identity. So you might as well just do it. You might as well be obnoxious if you wanna be obnoxious, you know? It's gonna happen either way. So yeah, don't care too much, just do it. Yesterday when I met someone for the first time, I introduced myself as Jay. And then about five minutes later, I was like, I use they, them pronouns. I want you to know, even if you're thinking about me, to be thinking about me with the right pronouns. <laughs> So just throwing them out there. My name is Janelle J. Lawrence, and my pronouns are they, them. I am not a gender expert, but I think I'm really rooted in loving everyone. And loving them means affirming them in whatever they bring to the table. I love you for being you. That does not make me a gender expert at all. Because <laughs> I also mess up. I just try which is all I really ask for too. I am a teacher. I run a department that is all people of color, actually, which I feel really proud of. And I advocated for that. And because we are all people of color in that space, I know that they try really hard to like hold on to my like pronouns. Even before I was the chair, like the chair before me was a black man and he was maybe in his seventies. And Bill was so sweet because Bill would really try to get my pronouns right. And in conversation would be like, Janelle, I mean, they, I mean, that person. And I was just like, it's okay, Bill, you're trying so hard. Just keep trying, you're gonna figure it out. You can use my name. like." Affirming in that way also felt really great, even though professionally, Bill was not getting <laughs> like the use of a pronoun and using my pronouns right. There was this level of seeing me, there was this level of trying, and that may not be professional, but like on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, that is what I'm really asking for. I think it's important to me that people use my right pronouns, even when they're thinking about me, because it's a part of manifesting and it's a part of habit. And if you're thinking about me with the right pronouns, then you usually use them when you speak about me. And also you can start seeing me as this like gender fluid, gender inclusive person and not like this solo gendered body. Look like some collard green. <laughs> collard green plants, that's all right. My name is Britt Fryer and I use he, him pronouns. The first person that I kind of really tried to like parse out this language around my gender with was with my mom. And I just would call my mom a lot and, and try to like explain kind of why I was feeling the way I was feeling with through just like talking to her about like the reasons why I was feeling low or sad, I kind of found the thing that was bothering me, which was that I wasn't really addressing this thing with my gender that was kind of like right there. And just having that space to like dialogue with someone who wasn't, you know, putting judgment on the situation or didn't even have preconceived notions about like what this sadness, this feeling could mean, that mattered a lot to me. My mom kind of helped me bring that conversation to like the rest of my family. Like I didn't have to think about this thing all by myself and then like present it to them all as like a big, a big council meeting or something like that. I kind of had my mom be the, be the liaison between like other family members and, and me, which was really great. So I didn't have to do all that emotional labor of like explaining myself to all of these people. Being that advocate for Brit, that was very important to me to be able to educate my family. One aunt, I never forget what she told me when I had the conversation with her about Brit. Like at first she didn't get it. She didn't. And then she did, but it's more of like an acceptance that like you don't need to get it. Like I think a lot of parents who even are supportive, they don't really want to like talk about it. Like they're like, I accept it, but like I don't need they don't. to like 
be a, a national broadcaster about all this information, but I think you weren't afraid to I'm like afraid to tell. tell people. That's how you and, help and people. Yeah, it kind of was nice for you to like be able to share your experience because so many people just like don't do that, especially from like a parent point of view. Because no, 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 most no. parents are just like, well, it's like my internal private family. Yes, yeah, private. And they don't. They don't want you to broadcast. It's private. Right. There's some value in like not hiding things. If you love your child, that's the best gift you can give them by supporting and advocating for them. You know what are we hiding for? <laughs> Be seen is what I say. Huh. Family is important to me because it lays the platform for your identity, who you are and whose you are, okay? <laughs>there's once kids who argued about if I was a boy or a girl. There was a brother and a sister. They were arguing. Like, I'm just sitting here, like, Serena, just like, boom, 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 boom. Like, it's a boy. It's I'm like, I am lich. I'm standing right here, y'all. It was more of an argument about who's right, not necessarily what I identified as. There are just little small moments in which, you know, I'm out here teaching folks not how to brush your teeth only, but, like, how to just be kinder humans. So we out here. I'm Maya, my pronouns are she and they. I am a parent to two daughters, a 10 year old and an eight year old. I am a pediatric dentist. Gender affirmation is something that is like the holistic part of a person. It's not on like an intake form. It's not a part of your past medical history. It's a part of who that person is. And so you have to acknowledge that part to be able to provide the best care. This is a part of what makes up why a person may not be brushing their teeth, why they may not have seen a dentist in 10 years, why they're taking a certain medication. Come, come. I think dental students and dentists alike need to always remember the why, why you chose to do this. Um, because it's really easy to be like, I'm becoming a dentist for the money or the, the work hours or the title or a number of things. Your why was always deeper than any of those things. You want to provide the best care you can to people who need it. So it's important to provide the holistic care so that people know that they're seen and not just a mouth or a body part or just a number or a dollar sign. Um, including everybody in the world. I lived in secrecy as a kid. I don't want any other generation to have to live that way. I want it to be better for those who come after us. The greatest thing I've learned from Annie is about courage and integrity. Annie, I think, is one of the most courageous people I've ever met and also has an extraordinarily strong ethical standard and base. At the very beginning of our coming together, I said to her, will you marry me? I wanted her to feel that she was secure. And it was incredibly important to me that we be in this expansive place that she had no sense that she needed to hide or in any way be, um, have any sense of shame at all. So this is a commercial blueberry field. So the little blueberries that you see here are the remnants of, um, of people coming in. Um, tr the traditional thing was to rake them. Um, this last season, they were coming in with these machines that look like um, giant lawn mowers that were raking them. And that's the first time I've ever seen that. So there are a few blueberries left. 
Lucy and I both have a very strong affinity for islands and mountains and coastline and being in the north and Maine does all of that. If I can get up on top of a mountain and I can see the ocean, I am beyond happy. We wanted to be recognized and seen by other people. We want our state to recognize us. So marriage became my issue when we came together because our relationship meant everything to me. So what I'm doing is I have, I think, six boxes of material um, that uh, involve a number of non-discrimination campaigns and then two marriage campaigns, 2009 and 2012. Once I've gone through things, then I'm going to cart them down and give them to the queer archives at the University of Southern Maine. This is the great moment. We were there. <laughs> that was fabulous. We are very visible and we are really up on top of a hill where the whole world can see us in a way that means that we have to put ourselves out there and say this is where we are and this is who we are and who I am as a human being and who I am in relationship to Lucy is valuable for myself and my community and for the world. Lucy was doing this for decades before we got together, so that's a big chunk of what I've learned from her, is being able to put this out there again and again and again. Our ability to be legally married, those legal things, they parallel a much more important piece, which is the ability to be integrated into society as a whole and the ability to, um, uh, to not be afraid. In the, the late 70s, when the gay movement started getting going, finally, I wasn't alone. Every generation of activists, all of us stand on the shoulders of people who went before, really brave people. Those folks are in us. Each generation takes over from the, from the previous one and opens the door just a bit wider. Yeah, if I were reflecting on all of this, I think the teaching from all of this is just keep up and keep on doing it and keep on doing it. It just takes time. Never give up. It, things don't seem to be moving forward, but actually the dam will break.